Man. All right, it is Christmas day. Yeah, that's right. I work on Christmas, no big deals. We just looked at some property up in Denver. We're gonna be making a move up there. We have a lot to do. I got this entire shop to pack up and get ready. And uh, we still got this guy over here that we're needing to finish up. Finished up off of the battery box. That was the last thing that we worked on. In the closing of that video, we were showing how we installed these battery posts here. So I think what we'll end up doing is finishing up how we got got these holes cut and what we're gonna be using those for. I had to fix something over here and repaint it, so I'm waiting for it to dry. Once it's finished drying, then we'll cut back to that part and then we'll come back to what we're working on today. We're gonna be working on a traction bar. This one right here is from Innovative Motor Mounts. Now, I am part of the Haasport, so to use another motor mount company part, whatever. Right, but I don't have any experience with this one. The first time that I saw this one was on the Boosted Boys channel. I was on working on Kyle's car. I was doing some brake lines on his wagon and I noticed the traction bar. I had him point it out to me and uh, I'll, I'll link that right now. Hey guys, Robert with Hush Performance. Today we're just north of Denver. We're here at the PFI Boosted Boys compound. Uh, today we're here, we're gonna build the brake line kit to the wagon van. Uh, this is an innovative one, right? All right, so we're gonna be jacking up the car. Kyle just showed me something with the innovative traction bar that he's got on here. I just noticed that it was new and I asked him something about it. And I asked him where the jack point is and uh, where were you showing me that? It's right here right in here. the middle. Little beef, little beefy there. Yeah, they added some metal right here and on the bottom of it, you can't see it because it's right underneath, but they actually wrote lift on it. Like they CNC'd that into the metal, nice. you know, to let you know you can lift the car up right here. Yeah, that's. That's a pretty cool part. Uh, looks like those are billet aluminum back there too. Your, yeah, uh, no, they're radius rods. Yeah, they're really nice. This Very traction cool. bar is probably one of the best ones you can get for an EF right well, now. Yeah, uh, I see it's got the tow hook still. That's yeah, cool. Got the hooks. I do like where they're where it's bolted in too. Uh, right here. Have you ever had the ones that kind of bolt right here? Yeah, no, they're they're kind of garbage. <laughs> yeah, because they they flex no matter how. Oh yeah, totally. Them. That's totally. Yeah, and what they do over here, we actually just had a CRX over here, and they have that one, but you can fix it by just adding, you know, a piece. Yeah. That goes off the bolt. That basically does the same thing that, as yeah. this does, but yeah. that one's already like that. Yeah. So does that mean there's two bolts back there? Yeah, the two it uses those yeah. two factory BB yeah. like 17s or whatever they are. But yeah, and that guy's not going to go anywhere because you know that's where it was designed to go. And these were designed just for the tow hooks not to actually yeah, support. Yeah, for sure. So back here, the radius rods. Looks like yours already broke loose too. Yep. Back there. Yeah. So these nuts. Pretty common problem. Too. Yeah, for sure. So there, you see a lot of cool features there, but. This guy is in the East Coast, so I am partial to Arizona, we're on the West Coast. We have friends that work at Full Race, and that's generally the traction bar we like to use with our swaps. Car's up, wheels are off, and we have the hub separated from the lower control arm, and the radius rods are gonna attach right here to the lower control arm. At first glance, I put it up here because there is some prep work that you have to do with the Full Race. This ridge right here, I do have a video on installing one of these and our budget EF was also using the full race bar up there, just like that. Well, what it does is it sucks up real high in this, um, the radiator support right here. And that way you get as much ground clearance as possible. Well, you can see right there, the oil pan is pretty low and that's just how it is with K-Series. And this, this traction bar, you can see that it bows down a bit and uh, well basically you don't have the ground clearance but what it could act as is maybe a bash bar right let me put this up so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about You saw that, but that was quite literally the easiest one I've ever installed. And I like it because it actually lets you use the factory radiator supports. So if you have this on a B series or something like that, that's fantastic. You have to cut all this stuff off using the full race. But remember, the full race gave you ground clearance and you can see how far this goes below. So that's gonna be a judgment call on you, what you wanna do. But like I was telling you about a bash bar, look what's now exposed. All right, so if you saw some debris on the road, it's gonna hit this first before your aluminum oil pan. The factory subframe bolts are gonna be used to bolt it up, uh, you know, against the frame rail over here. 
And uh, then it does come with its own hardware uh, for the radius rod, so let's move on to that. Not mad at you, Innovative. This is pretty much the nicest one I've installed. The easiest one, the adjustment is on point. I dig it, I like it. Now, something that's known for the K-Series in the EF is the pulley right here. This pulley may rub on this thing right here and that really depends on the ride height. Now, some of you guys wanna be really, really low and that could create a problem. This one, we're gonna send it stock height, but I think it's also gonna be a drag car too. So depending on how the suspension works out for him, we'll determine what's gonna happen there. You know, Haasport was making some drop radius rods uh, for OEM traction bars, or I should say OEM subframes, front subframes I should say even more, where it actually has a, a loop that will clear the pulley. Now whether they'll make them for other um, traction bars, I'm not sure, but I do know that Brian was working on his own, similar to what you see here. Will it be available soon? I'm not sure, but I do know that they're working on it at least. So now that the traction bar is on, now I'll be able to just go ahead and put the axles in. So what we're going to be using right here is I have some base model RSX axles. EP3 style axles would be essentially the same axles. Now this is the, probably the most important part. This axle happens to work. It's not that it does work. What I'm saying is his Hosport, make sure that the engine fits in the bay. They're not installing the engines with the intention of using a factory axle. What they'd end up doing is just making their own. Fortunately, this was an automatic car, but if this was a manual DX, we would definitely have to change these hubs out. The style that you need are gonna be the ones that are gonna accept the 32 millimeter. If you wanted to upgrade your axles to 36 styles, then you could use whatever hub that you had on the car and then maybe go get the car step style which replace the hubs and the bearing and you can use the bigger axles if you wanted but if you're trying to use ep3 or base model axles then the 32 style is what you're going to be looking for another thing you're going to need to know if you're a novice efer is this dust shield right back here you're going to have to puff that out otherwise it's going to bind on your axle you're going to try to move and you'll think the brakes all locked up and stuff but it's really the axle binding up on this extra dust shield With as much praise as I was giving this traction bar, I did find myself with some issues. Now as a manufacturer, I completely understand what might be going on here. It's really hard for us to be able to simulate every single suspension component. So we are using a stock shock and stock spring with the stock fork. And check this out right here. We have some clearance issues that we had to make, make for. You can see there's a lot of aluminum there that we end up trimming out. Now, I, what it looks like is maybe this was designed with a shorter spring and shock combination, which would then bring this whole lower control arm stuff up, and then that would change the geometry enough to where we can get that bolt in. But in the stock configuration like this, we just couldn't and we had to notch a whole bunch over here. We haven't modified this side yet, and you could see where it would, where it would hit and that we can't quite get this bolt in there. see all the clearance so you could understand with shorter shocks and struts how much clearance we would have there we probably wouldn't have to notch it at all so uh, I don't think it's anything innovative has done wrong although it might not be a bad idea to just let them know that they could just design a notch in there already so you wouldn't have to 
Well, since the car's in the air, then I think this is a good time to go ahead and install the header. We do have a lot of stuff going on back here, but our customer does want to keep heat. And you can see that it's pointing the wrong direction. Heat on this car is right over there. So how are we gonna get those over there? Well, we'll get to that uh, in time. But what I'll do right now is just unbolt it here and maybe even pull the hoses off of the wall so that we can get our header in there. Here's our header of choice on this one. This is K-Tunes. I would say a budget. I'm not sure if that's what it's mar it's listed as, but this is definitely their least expensive one that they have there. It's a swap header. It's gonna get the job done. It's getting exhaust from one place to another, and hopefully the profile is gonna work for our combination here. Hopefully it's tall enough to where we have plenty of exhaust clearance. This customer expressed to me that he'd eventually turbo this car, so I don't think we have to spend a whole lot of money on an exhaust manifold when we just literally need to get it out of the bay and out of the car. And the car is gonna fly anyways. It's an A2 all-wheel drive CRX. I'm sure it's gonna scoot with whatever header's on there. In budget EF, we were able to get the header in here without uh, taking the engine out and with it installed. Now, I'm already starting to look here that maybe I made a mistake with those axles. Look at how tight that is. And I wanted to keep it as stock as possible, which is why I have the heat shield on there too, but it looks like yeah, we might have some header clearance issues here. We're about to find out. Check it out. We got a header. Except we don't have a header with a transfer case. Check it out. Yep, it just wouldn't fit. We had a, I was able to get the header in this space, which you saw, which I was actually pretty surprised that it even fit in here with the transfer case installed, but it just wouldn't bolt to the flange here at all. So we removed the transfer case just to see what modifications we're gonna have to do. And I don't know how much of this header is gonna be left. You know, I was explaining to you that this car is eventually gonna be turboed and how much do we want to invest in a header? Uh, I don't, but for the sake of this video and many of you guys out there that are gonna be just a motor car and want the exhaust in the exhaust tunnel, maybe we could figure something out for you guys. Maybe it could be available in time. I don't know that it would be by the time you see this video, maybe by the end of the video series, it's possible. Um, you know, that's just an avenue we're gonna explore. We do have some fabrication guys next door on both sides here of this plaza that we might be able to talk to and see what they can do for us. Welcome back, it's been a few days since I worked on the car the last, and right after I installed the header, I went on the Facebook forum. It's called All Wheel Drive Performance Hondas, I believe. I'm sorry, I got it wrong. It's Performance All Wheel Drive Hondas right there on Facebook, you can join. Now on desktop, you do have the ability to search the group. And let's get the cursor on it right there. And if you could see on desktop, you could search for it. And I didn't realize that you could do this like you can't, like you could on the old Honda tech group. You'd search the thread and whichever thread you're looking for to get some answers. Well, I was able to search this looking for an answer to my question. Is there an all-wheel drive header out there? What are guys using? And by clicking on that, I was able to get a list of stuff. There wasn't a lot to be honest, but that doesn't mean that there isn't in somebody out there already that is doing it or they're posting in other forms, but this one right here is dedicated all wheel drive. And so if I, if I had to say anything about it, I think you guys should also join. Um, so I posted my thing about the header and a bunch of questions, a bunch of answers came up that no one really has one yet. Uh, and then I even went on my Instagram page and if you're not following it, it's at Hush Performance. And S1 commented saying they were working on a header for it right now. So today is, December 27th, it might have been Christmas Eve or something like that uh, when I was working at, no, it was it was Christmas Day that I was working on this car. So he was able to respond, they said they're already working on one. Will it be available by the time we need it? Maybe, so maybe we can delay on that. We won't finish the, the header section right now, uh, but we can move on, to, move on to some other stuff. So coming back to the car, what we were waiting on to dry was the paint here, and that's for these guys right here, these are our external battery terminals. So you pop this off right here, and uh, that's how you'll be able to access your battery once the bumper is on. And with it on, uh, it may be difficult to get to, say if you're 
had a factory bumper and factory fenders here, getting to these leads here could be difficult. So what we would do here is basically extend the leads here. We'd end up having to, we'd have a ground going somewhere and then, then another lead to this ground post here. Then we'd have this going to the alternator and then another one coming here so that our jumper box or battery cables could get there. I was gonna finish up with the battery in this video, but then I thought that maybe I should just wait because that's also part of the rest of the chassis harness because we do have to run a lead to our fuse box, which we are gonna keep in the bay. And I think that's something that we wanna try to keep together. I will close out this video not considering that one, but I will point out something else to you. So any of you that were watching me this whole time and have installed one of these before, you might have realized that I was actually installing it upside down. Yeah, well, you know, as a manufacturer, we like our logos up and usually where the engraving is, that means that's the part that's facing outwards, but not so much in this case. Now, it wasn't until I got underneath the car that I noticed there is trench, there is chamfering underneath, right there, almost where our shock fork is, but it actually wouldn't clear anyway. Again, I went on the, the CRX community forum on Facebook also, and posted a bunch of pictures there, and guys were commenting, say, hey, you know, you have it upside down. I did notice that once I got underneath the car because I saw the chamfering, and then they were saying that the chamfering didn't even clear either, uh, and that's in a stock spring and stock shock configuration. So here, let's look at it one more time. It's difficult to see at this angle, and I'm not sure that I can get it any better than this, but there is all the clearance in the world here. So I could stick my finger in between there, and you couldn't even do that if you wanted to with the spring completely uh, unsprung. So is it possible that maybe you can take the factory the factory radius arm off and then bolt this new one on with it on the ground. That way it compresses all this together. Would you have enough space to get that bolt, those two bolts there, completely off? <sighs> it's hard to say. Everyone on the pages was agreeing with me that it was most likely designed with aftermarket springs and aftermarket shocks because everything's shorter. This is all longer, and some guys said they sent emails over there just letting them know about it, and that is something that I was telling you in this video too. They could, they could just add some chamfering in that area for this case. It is what it is, aftermarket parts, it makes it fun. Whatever, I wouldn't say it's fun. Some people get frustrated. So that's gonna conclude this video. I appreciate you watching. Remember, anything that you see in any of our videos on this series, you'll see a discount code down below and there will also be available on our website. Even if you're not building an all-wheel drive, we still have headers down there available for you too from K-Tune if you're doing a K-Swap. We've got some other stuff all right there. Make sure to check out the discount code. Make sure to check out our website for all the other stuff that we got. Make sure to check out our sister channel at VTech Academy. And like always, happy tuning.